you so? I swear by the Almighty Allah. I swear by the Almighty Allah. That the evidence which I shall give to this commission. That the evidence which I shall give to this commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me Allah. So help me Allah. Thank you, sir. You can wait for the instruction. Could you kindly state your names? My name is Dudu Bami Jain. Where do you live, Mr. Jain? Excuse me? Where do you live? At Kirsirin. What work do you do? What work do you do? Now I'm a retiree, ma'am. You are in the public service? Yes, ma'am. In what position did you retire? In what position? Did you retire from? I retired after serving as ambassador to Washington with concurrency to Canada, Brazil, Mexico, and Venezuela. All right, um, sit down, we'll go through. Okay. Where are you in the public service in July 1994, 22nd July 1994? Yes, ma'am. In what position? In what position? 94, I was heading the loans department. Loans department in which ministry? Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs. Well, can you take us through your career briefly? Take us through your career. Okay. As briefly I, I, as possible, yes. I, I, I have had to take some jottings. Can that's I fine, that's me? fine. To refresh your memory. Okay. Okay. Um, my, I started working in 1974 uh, on a temporary basis, but I can just zoom through. Um, in 1980, I became senior loans officer. 83, principal loans officer, and national authorizing officer for the European Development Fund. I became uh, also director of finance uh, with oversight on the budget and treasury. 96, chief economist. 97, deputy permanent secretary. 98 permanent secretary, 2003 to 7 ambassador, 2008. Sorry, 98 permanent secretary. Until when? Um, until 2003 December, when I got appointed to the USA, as I mentioned. Uh, okay. Uh, I left Washington in December 2007, 2008. 2004, where did you go? I, I, I was already in Washington. You were ambassador in yes, 2004 to, to Washington, did you say? In Washington with a concurrent accreditation to Canada and the countries I mentioned. Until when? Until end of 2007. I left Washington December 27th. Yes, from 2007? 2008 to 12, I was Deputy General at the Bank Sahelo Saharian, BISIC. BISIC Bank, I was Deputy General Manager. And 2012 to, to 13, I was Managing Director of BISIC. After my retirement there, I got appointed as Ambassador to Senegal in 2014 to 15. 2015 to 2016 ambassador to Qatar and in 2016 I was appointed secretary general which lasted six weeks and finally minister of works which lasted five weeks. Finally? 2016 as minister of works 
and infrastructure. For how long? Five weeks, ma'am. That was your last position? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, Mr. Jan, um, today we are going to talk about the period um, when you were in the Ministry of Finance. Um, Um, we'll have to call you back on, on the Gamtel issues. But um, I'm going to show you, to begin with, um, MS-126, which is a bundle of documents. Um, Gamtel. Including a letter dated 21st November 2001, mm -hmm. written by D.B. Jain, Permanent Secretary, Department of State for Finance, to General Manager Central Bank. From the, from the bundle I've shown you, beginning with that letter. Yes, please. You wrote to this general manager. Mm -hmm. that, that's your signature, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. You wrote to the general manager, Central Bank, mm -hmm. with regard to two guarantees mm -hmm. signed by the Secretary of State for Finance at the mm -hmm. time, Mr. Farmer Rajata, mm -hmm. um, with regard to a loan or proposed loan in an aggregate amount of 150 million. Yes, ma'am. Could you tell us uh, about this this transaction, oh. your role in it, and what happened regarding this matter? Yes, thank you. I, I was asked to join um, two central bank officials, Mr. Cham, Kapu Cham, Abla Cham, sorry, and Mr. Conte to travel to London to essentially negotiate and conclude a facility from this so-called Federal Bullion Reserve something, uh, FBRC. Um, this, 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 I think this arrangement was initiated through a third party, Mr. Musa Musa. So in short, we got to London, and we were at the Metropolitan Hotel. Sorry, you were, I didn't get what you said when we, you got when to London. When we got, got to London, we, we, they had booked a hotel for us in Metropolitan. And we had a discussion with this, this gentleman, um, but we felt uneasy to conclude the, uh, the facility, the deal. Now, personally, my concern was that um, even before 2001, we have been receiving offers from some so-called European uh, um, investment banks and the like, which turned out to be scams. In fact, there was a coinage for that kind of operation, vulture funds. It's where you are offered a facility and they ask you to just sign on your letterhead or whatever. Once you do that, and you may not see the funds 99% of the time. But years down the road, somebody may come after you, making a claim on you, because they would have discounted that instrument in a secondary market, hence the name of vulture funds. So we, 
we felt we were not easy with, we were not convinced and we were not at ease. So we kind of, we did not go, to, we didn't complete the deal. We decided not to go ahead, although we had been given the instrument of guarantee and signed by the minister. Um, when, um, okay. Now, when you went to to London, you said you met with the gentleman. Who did you meet with? Yeah, I can't remember their names, Mama. You cannot remember? No. Yes. Now, when you said it was initiated by Mr. Musa, Musa, can you elaborate? Well, um, I, I, my... My, imp my own belief was that um, Mr. Musa Musa, they have a company, TK Motors. He was already well known and I think unconnected. So I assume, and because he was also in London um, um, with us in some ways, um, they, they arranged more or less our going to, to meet these people. It was not, in other words, um, a negotiation that was initiated by government through a third party. Okay. So he was with you in London? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, Mr. Cham, when he gave evidence, mentioned your seeking advice from the Standard Chartered Bank. Do you recollect yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. Could you we tell did, us about yes. that? The, 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 as I said, we, we, we are not like comfortable with this, the nature of this kind of lending. When you read the, um, I have a copy of the guarantee document that uh, the minister had signed. If you don't mind, I can go through oh, what I had done with my copy. What are you looking at? Um, at the Ministry of Finance guarantee, there are some clauses there. Okay. I'm not, of course, a lawyer, but we have been taught some things in business school. The nature of this guarantee is one whereby, in my view, I think we would have surrendered our sovereignty to these guys. I mean, it would be like you present it and you collect money or you go after the, the government although you, the government would not have seen any penny. But the instrument itself is couched in a way that you really cannot, um, you cannot wriggle out of it. And so before you know it, people are chasing you for monies you didn't see, and they could as uh, attack your assets overseas. And uh, the sum total was we, we were not comfortable to go ahead uh, to bring closure to the deal. Besides that, um, since I was um, in, in the loans, as principal loans officer, whatever, we, our debt stock was already becoming a burden. Um, mm -hmm. So we would rather go for soft money, like narrow our relationship with the multilateral donors and bilateral donors who would usually give you um, grants, and the multilateral donors will give you what we call credits, which is a soft loan you pay over 25, 30 years with no interest mm. on their service time. Okay. So this kind of deal was like not favorable. Okay. You understand? You were telling us about Standard Chartered Bank. Did you reach out to the bank? I, I, yes, we had a brief meeting with them, and of course they also um, like confirmed our thinking that this kind of deal is really not uh, straightforward. Mm. Yeah. Now you, um, as I mentioned, the letter of the 21st November, well everything is signed 21st November, but the letter that you specifically sorry, signed, sorry? in the letter of 21st November, you were forwarding the, the instruments, the, the draft guarantees to Central Bank. 
Yes. And um, of course, the, the guarantee was on the Department of State for Finance letterhead. Uh -huh. Who drafted these guarantees and how did you come by it, them? Yeah. Who drafted this guarantee? And this looks like legal language, certainly not from the loans unit, ma'am. Did the, the, the people you call the so-called Federal Billion Reserve Corporation send you this it, document? It could well have come from them. Okay. Yes, they, I think because there were some correspondence, I think, subsequent to this. The, you can look at the document, there are correspondence addressed to um, you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, there was correspondence addressed to me by then okay. reported President Hughes something um, on, on, on this loan itself. So you received the documents from them? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you. Um, I'll just move on to another issue. Would you like to ask any questions on this? One, and it's also relevant to the Gamtel contract. Even if the order party drafts the document, in terms of the government, do you give a chance to the legal advisor or the solicitor general to voice an opinion on the documents before final signing? The, uh, the way I was trained, I, if it had started like an initial through the normal process, it, it's like... Uh, it's gospel truth that we must go through the justice ministry. I mean, we are not the competent authority to <laughs> get involved in those things. They not only draft, but they also guide and advise. And as far as I can recall, we've had a very good um, professional relationship with the justice ministry all those years. So Never at the time of submission and traveling to London with this, there was no opinion from the legal advisor? No, not the government. I, no, no, not that I remember. The Solicitor General had not no, seen this it. was like a bundling, what we call bundling. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, did you say Musa Musa yes. initiated yes. this potential loan of uh, $150 million? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, how did he initiate it? Uh, well, I, I don't know. You don't know. But what we know that um, they had a presence with the government within the TK Motors group. If you remember, they also had this red air something flight as well. So I guess this was one of um, the activities they were engaged in, maybe at the higher level. Certainly not at our level. Did he travel with you or did you meet him there? We met him there. You met him there? Yes. He was at the hotel or at the airport to receive you? No, the, the, the airport side I cannot confirm now, honestly. But he where was there and they arranged the hotel. Where did you meet him? This was somewhere in uh, the Metropolitan Hotel also. Metropolitan Hotel. Okay. It doesn't matter. You met him there? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And Secretary, from your own narrative from 1998 to 2003. Permanent Secretary? Minister of Finance. No, that was in 98, ma'am. 1998 to 98. 2003. Yes, ma'am. Uh, during the period you were Permanent Secretary, um, the, your ministry withdrew substantial sums of money signed for by Honorable Farmer El Jata as SOS for Finance and Economic Affairs um, from an account at Central Bank. And from the evidence we have, this account was called the 3M account from at least the letters that emanated from your 
your ministry as well. That is how the account was referred to. I will show you this folder, MS114. Mm -hmm. And we have over 20 withdrawals by your ministry from this account. By? Your minister. Yes, okay. Yes. Samara El at the time from that mm -hmm. account. <clears throat> Marajata is, is dead, isn't he? He's passed away, yes, yes. quite some time. I have, we have, for convenience, I have flagged all the transactions which he oh, signed. Okay, the, the ones yes. flagged. Yes. You can, they are flagged on the side, yes, and the, you can look at a the couple, then I have some questions for okay. you. Okay, this is acquisition of used military trucks. Um, well, there are so many, oh, okay. many transactions, so many, all of them. All these ones you flagged? All of them, yes. Okay, request for transfer, mm. starting with that one. Did you have a chance to look at these transactions with the investigator? Um, no, I, I didn't see this file. Okay. I, I wasn't shown this. Okay. All right, that then, because I, I don't want you to be blindsided, I would like you to take your time and go through the transactions so that you could be of better assistance to this commission. So um, uh, we will reschedule another day when you will come, and you will talk about these transactions, what you know about them, as well as the Gamtel matters, um, the disbursements from the sale of Gamtel shares to the extent that it affected the embassy in Washington, D.C., during your tenure as ambassador, when you come back. Okay. Um, All right. I will make sure these transactions are copied so that you can have a look at them. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. But, um, we'll reschedule, Mr. Jain. Can you collect the folder, please? <laughs> These are yours too. Um, yes. Put your hand over the exhibit. Yes. Thank you. Okay, these are all yours. Yes. Ours are marked in red. We will invite you next week. We will call you and tell you the date next week. Yeah, anytime. Okay. anytime.